Heaven, you're here, sister. Come in. One of those mornings, huh? Oh, yes. Go on up. Okay. All right. Thanks, Alice. Mm -hmm. Ah, you're nothing but a pill pusher. Filling me full of poison and mumbo jumbo medicine. Now, you leave me alone. Get out. Get out. Do -do Looks like he's got some strength back. I don't care if that old monster never takes his medicine. At last, the only honest soul within shouting distance. So what's this bull about you not taking your medicine? What difference would it make? I'm dying anyway, you know that. Uh, no complaints, but I am. Well, let God set the date, all right? Okay, I'm out of here. Uh... Sister strong arm. Well, uh. Marie sent you another fruitcake with two drops of rum again, like long distance sex. Mr. Hemming's worse men than you have tried to make me blush. Uh, <laughs> early Christmas, eh? Always glad to help. That's a lovely old tune, Mr. Hemmings, but it doesn't distract me one bit. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Knocking with five, sister. Caught me with 40. Well, the rich get richer. There you go. I'll bankrupt the parish yet. At least he died happy. To my long-suffering housekeeper, Alice Carmichael, I bequeath the sum of $50,000. To Marie Brody of St. Michael's Rectory, I leave $500 so she can put more rum in those fruitcakes of hers. To Father Frank Dowling of St. Michael's, I leave my gold watch so he can edit those long-winded sermons of his. <laughs> Dear Daddy had such a wonderful sense of humor. So I see. As for my oldest son, Harold Jr., I leave the sum of $50, which is more than anyone ever gave me. If he's finally learned how to handle money, maybe he can do something with this. To my daughter, Justine, I leave something she would do well to accept, a word of advice. You don't get something for nothing in this life, and certainly not from me. And last, my youngest son, Jake. I was always hoping to get something from him. A simple thank you would have sufficed, but I never did. So, Jake, I'm leaving you with two words, thank you. You might try using them sometime. Who gets the money? My remaining liquid assets in the sum of six million dollars, I leave in the trust of Sister Stephanie of St. Michael's to endow any worthy cause 
or causes of her choice. Unlike my three children, Sister Stephanie possesses that rare ability to actually recognize a worthy cause outside herself. Sister, what'd you do? Promise the old man paradise? Jake, surely the sister isn't going to go along with this. I'm not. You are? Well, you don't expect her to disobey your father's wishes now, do you? She doesn't. We'll have her in court so fast her wimple will spin. Excuse us, please. I'm with you, father. But wait. Surely it seems the will can be broken. Oh, I'm afraid not. I'd have to attest that your father was of sound mind when he wrote it. Anyway, you can't touch the money. Your father transferred it to a trust fund months ago. You're the family banker, Sarah. Is that true? Several months ago, your father did establish the Families and Futures Trust. Look, I realize this is a big disappointment, but it's what your father wanted, and there's nothing I can do. We'll see about that. Six million dollars? That's a huge responsibility. I am, I'm not up to it. Mr. Hemmings thought you were, and so do I. What's so hard about giving away money? They do it in Washington all the time with their eyes shut. <laughs> I'm in position, all ready to go. Right, as soon as the crowd thins out. Don't worry, it's in the bag, or should I say in the box. I'll check with you when it's over. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Twelve languages. Uh, no, she's not directory. available. Why don't you just submit yeah, it in writing? Me. What? No, no we don't have like a fax a machine. You have to Hello? Have to Hello? Yeah, well, I realize that that's a lot of trouble. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, okay, fine. Well, I'll, I'll be waiting at the mailbox. That is the best idea today. Well, it has been quite a morning. I have been closeted with the bishop for hours trying to determine which project should get first consideration. Excuse me, Father Presswick, but it seems to me that I remember Mr. Hemmings saying that he wanted Sister Stephanie to distribute this money. Mr. Hemmings can rest assured his money is in good hands. Yeah, mine. Father Presswick, can I talk to you for a minute, privately? First of all, you don't understand. This is not my money. Father Prestwick. And of course it's your money, sister. Mr. Hemmings left it to you. Therefore, it belongs to the church. You took a vow of poverty. No, I'm not keeping any of this. Mr. Hemmings trusted me to pick worthy causes, and that is what I'm going to do. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Well, you better believe it, Phil. Father Prestwick. You realize I'll have to report this to the bishop? Report it to whoever you want. I am not changing my mind. And where is your respect for your vow of obedience? That's the vow I've always had trouble with. Uh, excuse me? Uh, Sister Stephanie, we have to make that clothing pick up before we go to the DOC. Right. Wait, wait, what is this DOC? Department of Correction. Sister Stephanie and I have been doing some counseling at the various jails. Let it ring, Marie. The one thing you can count on is they'll call back. I, I'm, I'm sure I left my glasses case in the, uh, in the chapel yesterday. Goodbye.
test. I know it's a test. <clears throat> Bundles for Africa. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Bundles for Africa. No, there must be some mistake. I... You're the bundle. No, I'm not going to Africa. Get in. Yeah, in. Huh. <laughs> Make a sound and I'll shut you up permanently. on Sunday. If this is a real kidnapping and not some kind of a scavenger hunt, you're not as smart as you think you are. Who's going to pay ransom for a nobody like me? The nun with all the bread. You're important to her. Yeah, I guess I am. Trudy. Trudy! Keep an eye on her. I don't like these things. You don't have to like it. Real sweetheart, huh? You don't have to be scared. You got a better idea? It's me. I got her. She better be worth your old man's fortune to that nun. Have you seen Marie? No, but I haven't had a moment to breathe. More of those petitioners clogging the phones. And uh, that shipping man who made the pickup for Bundles for Africa. Bundles for Africa? What pickup? St. Michael's Rectory. Sister Stephanie? Yes. We've got your housekeeper. What? Pick up the phone. Huh? Is she all right? She is for now. You want her to stay that way. You do exactly what I tell you. Someone joining us? Uh, this is Father Dolly. Okay, you can listen to her. Listen good. You two want to see her again. You line up six million dollars. You'll be hearing from me. And don't even think about going to the police. Now, wait a minute. We want to talk to Marie. I'll give her your best. How, how do we know that you have her unless you let us talk to her? Hello? Marie, are you all right? Are they treating you okay, Marie? Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm fine. The crumb bums don't scare me. <laughs> I know how much you care about Marie, but this job looks like the work of a pro, so will you let the professionals deal with it? Sergeant, the actual kidnapper may have been a pro, but you can bet that one of the Hemmings family hired whoever it was to do it. Maybe so, but we can't prove anything until we nail the kidnapper. You should have seen Jake Hemmings and his sister turn against Steve after the will was read. Yeah, and they warned us that they were going to get the money back. I can't arrest anyone for that. Look. I'm putting on a covert watch here at the rectory and someone to monitor the phone. But once the ransom drop is arranged, we'll move in. Oh, now really, Clancy. With Marie in danger, do you expect Steve and I to stand around and do nothing? It would be very nice if you did, Father. Let's go.
Good afternoon. Hi, Alice. We're here to see Jake. Uh, won't you come in? Oh, if you'll just wait up here. Father Dowling and Sister Stephanie are here to see you. What do they want now? The deed to the house? Oh. Get rid of it. You heard me. Uh, your lunch? Who can eat? Yes, sir. I'm uh, <coughs> afraid that Mr. Jake is, is unavailable. I'll bet. Let me help you with that tray, Alice. Oh, thank you. Oh, that turnover looks scrumptious. You really think so? I have a lot more in the kitchen. This way, Father. You must try them. They're my special recipe. Well, if you insist. Oh, oh Father, sit down, please. Oh, thank you. And what's a turnover without a nice cup of tea? What indeed? It's like a ship without a sail. Oh. Tell me something, Alice. How long have you been with the family? Yeah. Oh, that's all we need right now. The place will be crawling with cops. No, no, stay cool. I'll be right over. must have seen a good deal in those 23 years. If only these walls could talk, eh? I I'm not one to tell tales, Father. But I will say this about those three self-centered, spoiled children of his. Father Frank. Uh, not now, sister. Frank, it's important. Not now, please. Oh, would you allow me? I never quite had lunch today. Uh, you and the walls were saying? Y you won't think I'm a gossip. Oh, perish the thought. so much grief. Huh? He wasn't the only one, believe you me. I could tell you plenty about Miss Justine and her new parameters computer company. Uh, Alice, could you give me a lift downtown, please? Oh, of course. And maybe while we're driving, you can tell me a little bit about uh, Justine's new parameters. Huh? <laughs> To, honey. I'm looking for a job. Oh, yeah. Why don't you go see the manager? Is that the manager, the guy in the car? Him? Nah. That's the owner. The other guy's the manager. Owner doesn't spend a lot of time around here, huh? He does when he has business. Something wrong? could be wrong. Father Dowling, you're not inferring that someone in the Hemmings family is behind this. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sure that despite their father's will, they're all financially sound. Aren't they? So, oh, excuse me. 
Father Dowling, what a pleasant surprise. Miss Coolidge? Your escrow papers won't be ready until tomorrow, Mr. Hemmings. We tried to reach your office, but you'd already left. Well, thank you. Uh, and what brings you here, Father? Their housekeeper, Marie, was kidnapped this morning. Oh, dear, how shocking. Uh, this is very confidential, but I'm here to arrange for the ransom money. Uh, look, I, I realize that six million dollars in cash is a lot, but I'd be very grateful if you could make sure that the bank can get that much cash together. Right away. Oh. Good day, Father. Oh, Mr. Hemmings. I'm sure you'll understand that I'm very upset about Marie, but uh, I hope you won't be offended if I ask you a personal question. Oh, no, no, uh, whatever you want to know, Father. Well, why are you in debt to the city's most notorious loan shark? Max Milgram is not your friendly credit union. May I ask you how you know about myself and Mr. Milgram? I have my sources. All right. All right, the truth is I made some bad investments, Father. And uh, I was unable to secure a bank loan to cover them, and so I was forced to borrow from Max Milgram. I expected to pay him back for my inheritance. Well, we can always find a place for an able-bodied girl like you. But uh, there's one thing I got to tell you. The owner hires ex-cons. You know, gives them a chance to go straight. That bother you? Well, I didn't put it on my application, but um, I've done a little time myself. One of the joints out west? Real convent. Question. Can you drive a truck? Is the Pope Catholic? Frankly, Father, I find your questions very hurtful. Well, please forgive me. I'm really not myself today. You have to understand, Marie is so important to us. You can see I'm doing a volume business. Why would I stoop to a kidnapping? Why would you indeed? You're not at all upset about the fact that your stock is dropping. How do you know my stock is dropping? Oh, I have my sources. The Wall Street Journal. <laughs> You're a scamp, Father. Mm -hmm. The sad fact is, I'm much too patient about collecting bills. And there are so many corrupt people in this world. Don't you agree? Oh, yes. Yes, there are corrupt people. Do you have to go to work? Won't look very good if I don't, will it? <clears throat> That's too tight. <sighs> Trudy, I'm doing this. <sighs> Ouch! You're hurting her. Trudy, I'm having a rough time here. You want to cooperate, please? You got a real way with yourself, don't you?
kid. Go pick up your time card. You know, Spelling, I know that broad from somewhere. Oh, she's from out west. You just got out of the joints. Come on. Mm -hmm. It'll come back to me. Funny, I can't remember that body, but I'll never forget that face. What are you doing? I am going to cook dinner for you and Father Dowling. How does Marie do this? One, a half a teaspoon of the, a half a cup of the, I mean, you need to be a chemist. You don't need to cook dinner, Father Prestwick. Yes, I do. I need to make amends for the terrible thing I've done. Well, nobody's blaming you. No, you're all being very charitable. But I can see it on your faces. I mean, I, I, I'm the one who let that kidnapper walk right out the front door with Marie. I even helped him. Well, you didn't do it on purpose. Oh, that poor woman. Imagine what she's going through at this very moment. I can't bear to think about it. Father Prestrup. Oh, I, I'll never forgive myself. Well, I think you should. You haven't done anything wrong. But I'm the one who... Oh. Look, if I came in and I saw a guy who looked like a moving guy and he had a big crate that said bundles for Africa on it, I would have thought he was legit. I, I would have helped him. You would? Yeah, so would Frank, so would anybody. You just happened to be the one who came in. You know, Marie would be the first one to say that this is not your fault. She would? Yes, yeah, she would. You're right. That is exactly what she'd say. I am going to make you the best dinner you've ever had. Can't wait. Sister Stephanie? Yeah? Oh, thank you for this little chat. I feel much better. I'm glad, Father Prestwick. Oh, please. Philip. Phil. Where are you going? Justine is up to something very mysterious at her computer plant. As I was leaving, I heard two of the workers arguing in Korean. Well, that's a big help. Oh, you forget. I was a chaplain in Korea. Somewhere. Justine has not been meeting her payroll, and one of the workers is ready to quit, and the other one says that the problem will be solved within the next 24 hours. Marie's ransom? Who knows? But it certainly deserves another tour of the computer plant. A private tour. Steve, not again. I think it was open. This. It's not a dollar sign, but what is it? That's the symbol for the Rand, South African money. Justine is selling to South Africa? 
That's against federal law. It's also very profitable. You may go. Uh oh, I think we're in trouble. Come on, come He wants us to stop. Well, I told him to take it easy. Father Dowling, I think you've gone a shade too far. Well, what do you call selling computers to South Africa? And letting your own company stock go down without anyone becoming suspicious? All right, everyone, freeze. FBI, you have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Oh, I, I suppose you're wondering what we're doing here. You have the right to speak to an attorney, oh. to have an attorney present during questioning. I should have let them haul you in, too. I begged you to let us handle this. Well, at least we know now that Justine isn't behind the kidnapping. Sister, I... Uh, thank you. Sergeant, we'll always be grateful for your kindness. Thank goodness I'm in at a pack of van lines. Steve, that place is not for you. It's dangerous. Frank, it's the only hope we've got. Well, then I better go with you. Oh, no. Now, I, just to keep an eye on you. Don't worry. I'll stay out of sight. Come on. Julia, we're even have priests come by for a visit, you know. Yeah. You made a big impression. I mean, look, I gotta get you out of here. Come on, let's go. You again? What now, sister? Yeah, Jake, it's, it's okay. She's okay. I'm trying to find out which of your drivers kidnapped Marie for you. For me? You just hire ex-cons for brownie points, Jake? I hire them because I'm an ex-con myself. I passed some bad checks a while back. You know, I really want to believe you, Jake. I really do. What about that phone call you got yesterday that had you hightailing it over here? Well, is there anything you don't know about? One of my drivers was filching from the customers. Ask Spellman. Yeah, I believe you. If you tell me which one of your drivers drove truck number 12 yesterday. Spellman's filing system. Uh, Dolph drove number 12 yesterday. But if he did the kidnapping, they won't even have to book him. I'll break his neck first.
I always mix a little ketchup with my mayonnaise. Oh, well. Dolph's really picky about his food. Besides, his stomach has been bothering him a lot lately. He has every reason to be nervous. Trudy, he's never going to marry you. You know that, don't you? Sure he will. Well, why should he? You're his housekeeper already, and you're his lady friend. Men don't buy what they can borrow. Dolph promised me, as soon as we get this money. And you believed him? Well, yeah. <laughs> you're making a big mistake. Uh -uh. Bologna again? What's the matter? You got no imagination? I thought you liked it. We had bologna yesterday. You know, can we have a little variety? You know, salami, maybe? No, that's too hard on my stomach. It's cheese. Cheese would be good. Where do you try the food in jail? Dolph, can we get married right away? Dolph. Trudy, why are you doing this? This is a very tense situation here. I don't want to talk about something like that right now. Well, I want to talk about it. You know, you're really getting on my nerves. You know that? Where are you going? To get a decent lunch. Trudy, now you're a good girl at heart. I know that. For your own sake, as much as mine, get me out of here. If you don't go to jail this time, you certainly will the next time. Hey, Dolph! You got a phone call! I'll be back. We gotta speed things up. The priest and the nun keep sniffing around. Who knows how close they're getting? Fine by me. The old lady's trashing my home. the game plan. When we phone you, you release the old lady. It's done. That's Sarah from the bank. Come with me. No. Trudy, this can only end badly for you. Men like Dolph care for themselves, period. Hurry up and go, please. Tie her up again. You know, paying off Dolph in advance isn't the only odd move that Junior's made. From the minute that will was read, he and his Miss Coolidge have acted in a very desperate fashion. They arranged to have Marie kidnapped the next morning, and they're asking for every dollar that's in the trust fund. It's not exactly low-profile body snatching, but greed is greed. Yeah, you know, I just wonder if that's all it is. You know something, Steve? What? What if they're trying to stop you from making any withdrawal from the fund, even the smallest amount? You think so? I'm not sure. Father Dolly. Okay. We do business tomorrow morning. 
Tomorrow's Saturday. The bank is closed. Work it out. You find a suitcase in the vestibule to hold the six mil. You'll hear from me. Well? He left a suitcase for the ransom. Okay, that's fine. Six, seven, eight, nine, six million. I appreciate your bringing the money here, Miss Coolidge. It seemed a lot safer than our coming to the bank. Anything to help, Father. Well, we knew you'd feel that way. Now, if you just sign this withdrawal slip. Oh, that's a lot of zeros. Hello? May I ask who's calling? It's for you, Father. Very rough voice. This is Father Darling. That dimwit priest at the rectory said I could reach you here. You got the money? Yes. Then leave it under the stairs to the elevated at the northwest corner of Wells and Van Buren. Everything okay? Yes, yes. Well, you've been great, both of you. I do hope everything goes smoothly. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck, Father. Thank you. Bye, Harold. Bye, my sister. some mistake. The mistake you made, Mr. Hemmings, was demanding every last dime that was supposed to be in that trust fund. Supposed to be, but you and Miss Sarah here had already embezzled all of your father's liquid assets. Now, there is no money in the trust fund, is there? You took it and spent it before your father died. Well, th this is all absurd. <laughs> Kidnapping Marie was a clever way, clever but cruel, of stopping Sister Stephanie from withdrawing anything from an empty fund money you brought here today, that's the bank's money, isn't it? And you almost got away with it. You had my withdrawal slip for $6 million. You were going to put back the bank $6 million. You were almost home free. Almost. Harold, I think we need a lawyer. Oh, I think that's good thinking. I made a bargain with Trudy. She promised to go back to her family if I'd use my victim's rights to get her a suspended sentence. Well, that's good bargaining, Marie. Yeah, yeah thank God you're safe, Marie. Say, so you folks must be starving. Oh. Welcome home, Marie. You must be starving. My casserole is almost ready. His casserole? Oh. 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 I think I want to be kidnapped again. Oh. <laughs> 